Hello everyone, this is Miner Bob, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Guild Wars 2. We're going to pick up where we left off with our certain engineer and start doing some tasks. You can see that we have a vista down there at the bottom, and we have a heart, or otherwise known as a renowned task, which are many quests that you can perform that will get you experience, currency, and a type of currency called karma. Right now we're searching for the cave entrance that leads to that vista. And as soon as we get to the vista, it'll be pretty evident as to what that is. So here's the cave entrance. Fortunately, it's full of creatures with yellow names, which are not hostile, but will be if you attack them. Up there at the top, you can see a floating parchment. That's a vista. Basically, it is a point that you can view from that will show you a panorama of the scene. Now, the interesting part is it's not a cutscene. It's actually a fly-through of the area as it really is. So the creatures you see are the ones that are there. If there are players there, you'll actually see them performing their actions. There were players in there, for example, you'd see them running around. And there we have it. It gave us some experience. It shows the icon on our mini map as filled in instead of an outline showing we've already gotten it. So we can move on to our next item. You can see that the closest item to you is in your mini map and it has kind of a sparkle around it, in this case around a heart. Again, it's an outline showing we haven't done it, so we need to do it. In the upper right hand corner you can see that's the task. You're now close enough to perform it. It says experiment on inactive golems, repair golem control panels, and organize toolboxes along the road and inside nearby labs. So you can see that with my options I have the control panel toolboxes and so on. They're showing up in red so they're something for you to click on and interact with the F key. In this case I created, uh, activated the control panel and it brought up a robot to fight. I could have run away, but I don't leave my messes behind. So it says you help duel. That tells you that it advanced the yellow taskbar in the upper right hand corner. Um, so we're getting closer to filling out the heart. We're about just under halfway there. Another toolbox. There's a control panel behind me to mess with another golem. Activate. Please diagnose the failure symptoms present. Two frayed wires are sparking. Let's see if that works. Nope. He's still defective. Okay. Making short work of him with that pistol. Notice the pistol number two skill. It, it has a cooldown number to show you that you can't just use it over and over and over again. Let's activate this robot. See, ether charge the dyno server. Let's see if that'll get it going. Swap the, no, invert the mood matrix. And tweak the multi-phase polarity. Uh, that didn't work. System integrity compromised. See, now if I had built these golems, they would work. Now uh, we've got just a few more things to do. Maybe that toolbox and that control panel will be enough. A little left to go. Hmm, liquid coolant leaking? Let's see if that works. Well, it got me the heart, but got to clean up this mess first. Okay, so let's find the guy with the heart over his head. Let's see these right up ahead of us. And it has a little uh, purple triangle there it's indicating so that this is where you can spend your karma currency. If you see in the lower left hand corner of this dialog box, it says I have 386 karma. That's because I already have an account uh, or already had characters in this account and they had already earned some. In this case, I could 
get these Golem Prototype Ankle Crystals, I'm going to buy two of them because these are accessories and they go into the accessory slot in your character. And notice that what it does is it automatically updates your uh, characteristics. In this case, they were each plus three condition damage, so I now have six condition damage. So this will increase the amount of damage I do when it's inflicting a specific type of damage called condition damage. Let's see, I already have that. Uh, there's a point of interest. I seem to have missed one back in Sor Andre, so I'll have to get that later. But here we go. You just usually need to get near the area and you'll automatically get it. In this case, it's Battleground Plaza. Sometimes there will be golem fights here that are, are events. Um, ooh, a green leather bag for 32 coppers. So see I have two empty slots there. That's where you put bags. You only have three slots uh, with a free-to-play account. And so we can automatically put that in. You can see that it extended uh, my inventory. I'm going to show the bag. So I have 25 slots, 120 from the starter backpack and the five from the green leather bag that I just uh, bought. I'm gonna go ahead and hide the bags and put them all together. So, on we go. Due south, you can see that vista right there at the top. And there's a point of interest inside the building. That's that little square Right now it's not filled. Hmm, let's find a way up here. Uh, there, there we go. Uh, get up. Oop, oop. And there are some steps. Perfect. Genius. Absolute genius. By the way, the genius phrase is because of the Southerns all believe that they're geniuses. <laughs> Gotta get into it. Nice waterfall. Really, this is a visually beautiful game that did attract me very much to it, but it's more the cooperative play. We haven't seen it yet. I'm playing this at an odd hour, um, so there aren't a lot of players around. But sooner or later, you'll see the cooperative gameplay that, that really uh, happens in this game versus some others. What I mean by that is, is that when you fire upon a, and you know, kill a mob, you don't necessarily deny someone else the ability to get experience for those mobs. So we're going to head off to the next building here. So that leads to more cooperative rather than competitive gameplay between characters. One thing you'll see a lot here is people helping people, bringing them back up, resing them when they, they're defeated, helping them with fights they're having problems with. Okay, so here we're gonna assist the Professor in helping the young progeny. Inspire impressionable progeny, deter in quest recruiters, chase down unruly progeny. Perform demonstrations of teaching, which I'm doing here, and protect progeny from potential threats. Okay, so we fired off a uh, fire imp here. Great fun. Scared the little kids. That'll teach them lessons. Uh, let's try the creation of energy. Yep, storm imp. So you see those little white numbers that go flying off my character. Ooh, I just got an event, or achievement, excuse me, for Trash Collector. Those white numbers flying off the opponent basically shows the damage I'm doing. If it's red, it's a critical hit. If it's white, it's normal damage, non-critical damage. Yeah, see, we have a character who came in to help. Uh, they're in that aqua green color. So even though he was killing something I was working on, it didn't take away experience from me. Okay, an inquest recruiter, once you basically talk to them, they turn red and, oops, you can fight him. 
Wow. There's another recruiter. We're working through this renowned task pretty quickly. Well, okay, there he is. He's a little slow to fight. Yeah, but he pulls his swords. Oh, that was some serious lag there. That wasn't funny. That can sometimes get you killed. You desire unrivaled power. There's an impressionable Speaking progeny. An Let's do one of those. Professors think they know more than we do, but they're actually making it so we couldn't ha know more than they do. <laughs> Reining us in, throttling us intellectually. Uh huh. Oop, oop, oop. Somebody pulled the enemy over to me there. Oh, there's a fire in. Ooh. Accidentally targeted the wrong person there. I have an amazing opportunity that you cannot pass. Up. Everything has a place in the eternal Young realm. geniuses need guidance, yes, definitely. They hope to grow old. So I got a level and I got the heart. Heart gave me 90 more karma, 45 coins. I got a bag for my uh, level. Now level three. Gonna go ahead and use that bag. And then I got some warm stones. Those are trophies. Um, you can see that they're pretty much not worth very much. Let's go over to the professor and see what I can get for my karma. Condition damage, I already have those. Um, hmm, I don't have any gloves, so I can use, go ahead and buy those. That cost me 56. And I'm going to go ahead and immediately equip them. Let's sell, see all the gray stuff. I can sell those, just hit sell junk. Yeah. And I can sell my old pistol. So I'm going to do that. Now we have this vista above me. See the up arrow on that? It shows it's above me. So let's figure out how we can get there. Ooh, a merchant. Let's see what he has. Always be loyal to your crew. Come on. Purple now. Ooh, a bottle of experimental ooze booze, but I have to be level eight. I'm gonna go ahead and get it anyways. There is an achievement for drinking a large amount of alcohol. Um so I'll be working toward that. Every time I see somebody I can buy some some drink, I'm gonna go ahead and do it. Oh, there it is. Uh that looks like glass. Well, it's not glass, it's Surin glass. It's kind of like a magnetic field, I believe. So that's not the way in. Oh jeez, that was a bad joke. No, but seriously, your mom is really smart. Could not pass yeah. up. Good yours too. Um, that's not good. Your road to uh, let's go around a little bit. No, nope, but I'm not going to get over that. Oh, there's the steps to the right. Speak to me if you're interested. Ah, missed it. Your Sometimes your camera zips in and out. You know, I, I as you can see, I'm zoomed way out. Um, I play way above my character so I can see more of the action. Personally, I like it because it, you know, you get to take in more of the scenery and in big fights it really helps. Uh, but when you're in close terrain, it's really a bother. Mm, let's look at this panorama. You can even hear the noises that the players and the NPCs are making while you're going through the panorama. Okay, 115 more experience. Good stuff. Well, we have a heart down here, plus a point of interest, and another point of interest. Let's see. Those little skull and crossbones on the map means that there is non-player characters that are down. Ooh, what's this? Chase him down, chase him down. Let's 
I'm not at an event. If it were an event, there would be an orange circle around here. So I'm not quite sure why this is occurring. But, it's always loot. Terrible, I know. Gunning down in quest. So the Assurance storyline has a big rivalry between regular Assurance and Inquest and Assurance. So you'll see that theme come up quite a bit. So he, he started helping uh, Resurrect. And so the person came up much quicker. We both got experience for it. You can see that I gained 20 experience just for healing that non-player character. So it really helps you to be cooperative. They, they encourage it because they give experience for practically everything. I really like that about this game, obviously. So, assist the Opticalium with lightning research. Ooh. Okay, we have these energy storage tanks. There's those red sparks. We kill them. It turns into a ball of energy, and then we put it in the storage tank. See, we got one. We go over here, put it in. Good to go. Good thing is, it remembers this about each player, and so each of us can use the tank separately. But in this particular task, we can only use each tank once. Uh, I'm sure there's some reset period, but during the normal course of the... Uh, doing this task, it usually doesn't recharge. I uh, guess that's a corner. Ah, got that point of interest. Energy storage tanks. There's one. Gotta get them. Okay. So here's some storm generators. Can see what they do. Oh, stop shooting me. Haha, <laughs> nice little storm. Uh, oh, that's a special one. I can't use that. So I only have a certain amount of time to put this guy. I already use that. I only have a certain amount of time to put it in there, and then it's gone. Darn it. Hmm. Yeah, let's go activate another one. And the other ones. You know, all you have to do is basically activate him. You can see I'm almost through with the task. It's really not that hard. Cool though, <laughs> those little storms. Okay, this should do it. Yep, got me the heart. Can I make it in time? Won't let me activate. Won't let me activate because I have the heart already. There we go. So they're really only active for those people that need them. Okay, well, there's a waypoint. What to do? Okay, we've done all that, so let's go down to the merchant, the point of interest, and to the next renown heart. Hmm. Got plenty of space in my inventory. It's one of the big limitations of free to play, of course is you start with a lot fewer slots. Okay. I don't want to sell any of that. Notice that what I have is a tiny totem. It says crafting material. You can use deposit material and that will get it out of your inventory and put it into your storage bank. Ooh, got a level. Just by coming to a new area. Weapon three, skill number three, banking and points of interest are now visible. They always were for me. So, but yep, there's that third pistol skill. Um, we're going to look at the bank later, and that way I can show you where all your crafting materials are being stored. Right now, suffice it to say, you just want it out of your inventory, uh, because you're not going to use them until you actually craft. 
before we go in there and do that test, let's go to PvP. I want to start doing my build. Okay, that cross swords icon that I did at the top, that's to enter the PvP area called Heart of the Mists. And one good thing about it is, first off, a free-to-play can go to PvP at any time. And you can level if that's the thing you want to do. If you're a PvP type person, it's probably a going to be a fun thing for you. In fact, what the developers said is that a lot of the new free-to-play accounts went in specifically for PvP. They don't play the open world content or they, they do very little. They're there for PvP. So free to play has actually been very good for ArenaNet. Why this is good for open world players is that it gives you a nice area that's accessible at low level uh, for banking, Black Lion uh, trading posts, and general vendors that can give you some equipment that you don't readily have access to. So the first thing I'm going to do is go get me I a command. basic rifle. Now normally I would go to the Black Lion trading post and get a better quality one but if you're just starting out in a free-to-play account you probably don't have that much money so I'm going to do Major what you cross. would normally do which is just to get that basic rifle. You can see down here it is 64 coppers and it allows me to replace my pistol. You can see there's several tabs uh, on the left hand side showing different kinds of equipment. Also, all of the basic items are right here. I'm gonna choose a spear gun, which allows me to have an underwater weapon. That's another 64 coffers. And there they are. Let's go ahead and equip them. So you can see that all of my skills have changed out now that I have a rifle there. And I've put the spear gun in. Now the second tab here are for level 10 weapons. We're not level 10, so we can't really use that right now. Here's where we can sell. So I'm going to sell my old pistol. I'll be on my way. And I'll be on my way. See, here's an armor smith. Again, Seize basic armor can be made. If you have more money, you want to buy some at the Black Lion Trading Post. These are level 10s here. So level 5 armor. There we go. Rawhide Vest. You can see that it's 27 defense plus 5 power. Better than I currently have. Leggings. 18 defense instead of 15. And boots. 13 defense instead of 11. And gloves, well, I actually have better gloves, so I'm going to leave it at that. Go ahead and equip everything. And sell off those old pieces. So there's another vendor, and he will have general items Up like... Uh, gathering tools and salvage kits. Here's a crude you salvage kit for 32 often. coppers. I'm going to go ahead and get one of those because I want to be able to start salvaging stuff. And I'm going to get, I think, two sets of the tools here. There we go. That is all. So forging is where the sickle goes, there's where the axe goes, and there's where the pick goes. Now that I'm equipped with that, I can actually harvest plants, chop down trees, and um, mine ore as I pass them. Just occurred to me that I might be able to salvage some of the stuff I've done. So the bottom tab there allows you to buy back the gear that you sold. Let's see if we can actually tear it down. So you double click on the uh, crude salvage kit and you can see everything's red so there's nothing there to salvage. Our deeds uh, so are let's reflected go ahead and get it back. Some things you can salvage, some you can't. It depends on how they're purchased. Generally things that you're given as a reward or start items cannot be salvaged. 
Okay, so let's just go ahead and leave PvP. There's no reason to go into the bank right now. Going back to Metrica Province, where we left from. And we're going to end up at exactly the same spot where we had left. Well, that's where we're going to leave it for today. I hope you enjoyed this and found it useful. If so, a comment, a like, or a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. As always, this is Minor Bob, signing off.